we're here again with my good friend, Mr. Antler King himself, Todd Stittleberg. And what we're talking about today is how we can keep deer home during season, how we can get them that extra year. There's all sorts of things we can't control, but by addressing what we can, what we do is we tick those percents up. Todd, there's nobody in this world that I'd rather talk deer nutrition with than you because quite honestly, I don't know anybody in this world who knows more <laughs> about it. How can we use nutrition specifically? I mean, yes, deer, unless you've got a high fence, deer are going to leave. That's just a high fence or 20,000 acres. And even on 20,000, the ones on the edge are going to leave. But what can we do to increase those odds through nutrition by keeping those deer home more? You know, I, I try to make it as simple as possible. And I say deer, they want, they want three things. They want food, cover, water. Mm -hmm. It really is that simple. They're not a lot unlike us. If we go home tonight, open up the refrigerator and it's empty, we're going to make a move, correct? We're going someplace else, you know? And so deer are no different. And, and don't just focus on food during the spring, during the summer, during the fall, during the winter. It's got to be year round, okay? Um, the last thing I ever, ever want to do is give a deer a reason to leave my property. And if you don't mind me interrupting you there, that right there is key. Are we hunting in spring? Not, well, turkeys. Correct, yeah. But not whitetails. Not legally, anyway. We're not <laughs> legally hunting them during summer. We're not legally hunting them during March or February. But if we can go ahead and keep that animal on that property that whole year, yeah. where's it going to be in fall? Yeah, that's just it. I mean, if... If he has everything, if we're giving him everything he needs, he has no reason to leave, you know, outside of us intruding in his area, running a dog through there or whatever, but he has no reason to leave. And generally he, he won't. So we need to focus on year round nutrition. Um, that's just so, so very important. And uh, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in all of the Antler King mixes that I developed. It wasn't one single variety of a plant in there. Generally, generally in that bag were four, five, six, seven, eight different varieties of plants. I'm going to interrupt you right here to cement your point. Everybody knows brassicas. Brassicas is a large family. Everyone knows brassicas. The deer do not touch them until <laughs> after a couple frosts and blah, blah, blah. Right. I'm telling you, you specifically picked strains that are some a percent of those strains in it are very 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 attractive early season very very attractive mid-season yeah. very very attractive late season always cater your planting specifically to your goal yeah and my goodness did you guys ever yeah if all you want to do is hunt in december but if you want to hunt all season that honey hole you guys knock that out. you knock that out of the park. And, and that's a great point and, and you know you're right because you as you said, everyone has it in their brain that deer won't eat brassicas until a, a first frost, second frost, or whatever. And that is not the case. There are it, varieties. It is with a whole bunch. Of with many varieties. Yeah, you're right. But we've got varieties in that honey hole that they'll eat in August and varieties that they'll eat in November or December. So, but getting back to that, you know, I want to have a bunch of different sources of food. You know, not only am I planting food plots, I'm utilizing trees. You know, I'm utilizing apple trees you know, uh, virtually chestnuts, dunk, chestnuts <laughs> um, you know, persimmons, you know, uh, obviously we're a little limited as to where you live. You know, there's some, there's some trees that just won't make it in really cold weather, but always think, you know, and, and uh, just try to produce as much food as possible. Um, let's say that you're limited in food plots. Maybe you've only got two or three food plots. Well, you know what, rather than saying, ah, forget about the fertilizer, forget about the lime, I'm just gonna plant something and it'll grow. Well, what if you really pay attention, get your pH up to a seven, fertilize the way you ought to, and instead of producing one ton of food per acre, you produce eight, nine, or 10 tons well, per acre. And here's something I learned in areas where I had very limited ability to do anything. You go to a simple meadow, the corner that you happen to be hunting, spread out some lawn fertilizer a couple times a year and guess where the deer go? Yeah. Why is that? Well, because when the soil is more fertile, the healthier the soil, the healthier the plants. The healthier the plants, the more nutritious the plants. Hmm, I can eat food on a scale of one to 10, that's a three, 
or I can eat a five yeah. or an eight or a 10. Which am I going to go for? Yeah. No, I think yep. you're a hundred, very insightful on that one. You know, so yeah, it's just, it's a matter of trying to have food on that property 24 seven, 365 and trying to magnify if you're really limited in what you can produce or what you can plant, how many acres you can plant, then, you know, focus on getting as many tons out of that half acre as possible. Final thoughts brought to you by Huntworth. You know, I've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people tell me over the years, well, you know, my neighbor's got all kinds of corn and soybeans, so, you know, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep deer on my property. You are 100% wrong, you know? Are there times when deer like corn and soybeans? Absolutely, but it's really a fairly small window. You know, if, if you can provide, you know, luscious clover sources and keep those clover plants mowed accordingly so that they're really high in protein and energy. And then you have a whole myriad of other products, you know, certain brassicas, um, you know, like our, our fall, winter, spring with the cereal rye in there that we use. It's just phenomenal. And those are all things that that guy doesn't have. And to put an exclamation point on this, we don't, yes, it's awesome when they stay here 24 seven. But really, if they're going to leave sometime around 10 o'clock at night and getting back sometime around 5 o'clock in the morning ain't bad. We they can, can let go, that happen. They can go over that yeah. big cornfield. Yeah. That's okay. But if you got that staging plot on your place and they're hitting that first and they happen to be picking away at your, your candy crib, let yeah. them go over there at 10 o'clock. Just make sure you're back by 5. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. This is right. very helpful.